Hello. Um, I'm going to be showing you here today the basic procedures for how to set up the yeast cell communication lab. This setup that I have here is the most basic information. You are going to be designing different variations on this in order to test uh, a variable of your choice. But this is the basic setup that you'll need to uh, understand that you will be modifying for your own experiment. To start off, we have these two strains of yeast. We have A and we have alpha. And in each of these little vials is some agar with a little bit of yeast sitting on the top of that agar film. You need to find out a way to transport this yeast onto the various other media that we'll be using, whether it's these agar plates, which have agar sitting on them, or if you're going to mix them into a liquid broth, which is all the food that the yeast need to survive. To start off, you need to make two environments, and we're going to label these two. We're going to make one environment, the A yeast environment, and we're going to make the other one, alpha, the alpha environment. Next up, you might have a choice. Um, depending on how much, how much supplies we have, you might end up making their environments out of sterile water or out of the broth, or out of a combination of the two. To do that, we need to keep our environment as clean and sterile as possible. These tubes, before I open the caps, are sterile. This broth and this water are sterile, which means that there is nothing growing in them. But as soon as we start opening the tops, as soon as we start putting uh, even sterile pipettes in them, they're going to start to carry various bacteria and wild yeast from the air around us into them. So if we do this uh, after about a day of all the students in the classes doing, using these materials, these are no longer considered sterile. We can try to prevent the contamination for as long as possible, which is why I have a clean setup. I just recently laid down this piece of paper, which I have my pipettes and materials on. Um, it'll stay sterile for a little while, but slowly uh, stuff will fall down onto them. So to start off, I'll take one of my pipettes and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my environments out of sterile water, uh, but you might use the broth uh, to make your initial environments. I'm gonna open up my test tube, open up my water, take my pipette, and as I pull up, it may be hard to see, but I'm gonna go right up to the edge, I'll show you in a second, right up to that corner, right there, that, that corner of the pipette, right there, is one milliliter. And you can also measure that by seeing how much water is in the culture tubes because they also have uh, measurements on them. So I'm going to put one milliliter of sterile water into my culture tube, cap it, close my sterile water, and then go to my next culture tube, open. Open. I know I just closed this, but to keep things sterile, we keep them closed for as long as possible. And add again one milliliter. Cap. Cap. Back. This pipette has now been in the sterile water. Um, I probably don't want to use it again because I don't want to contaminate anything else. So I can recycle this one pipette. So it's gone. Next, I need to put my A and my alpha type yeast into my two culture tubes. To do that, I'll take some toothpicks. Take one sterile toothpick. Oh, I grabbed two, so I'm gonna toss 
the second one aside, so I only have one, because uh, anytime you touch these toothpicks, they no longer become sterile. So I'm going to take this toothpick, I'm going to open up my A type yeast. Now the tricky thing here is that yeast is sitting on the top of the agar. And these are microorganisms, they're extremely small, and all you have to do uh, is reach in with your toothpick, wipe lightly across any of the white smeariness, don't stab into the agar, and now you have millions of yeast on this one toothpick. You can't see them, you won't be able to see them, uh, because they are microscopic. So I'm going to close up my yeast, take my A tube, and take the toothpick, put it directly in, so it's all the way in there, cap it, and then I'm just going to shake it up for about a minute. While one of my other partners continues to shake that up, I'm going to do the same thing with my alpha tube. Grab the alpha yeast, grab a new sterile toothpick, and again, I'm just going to stick it into the tube, wipe across the white slime, just very lightly, drop it into my tube, cap, cap, shake, and stick it in. And that's all you have to do to set up your initial environments. Okay, so after shaking these both up a little bit, I have two culture tubes. One is growing with A-type yeast mixed into that liquid. The other one is growing with alpha-type yeast mixed into that liquid at the bottom. Now, depending on my experiment, I would want to do something with these yeast. Um, if I were testing something such as how many schmooze grow in different uh, broth concentrations, um, I might add the broth directly to these culture tubes. Um, if I'm testing different temperatures, I might put these culture tubes um, into some other environments. Uh, but this is my initial setup. From here, I can use this liquid, which is in both of these tubes, I can use that liquid which is full of yeast, to set up other experiments. The main one, uh, the most basic experiment, would look like this. You would take three culture dishes, and you'd want to label them with whatever your experiment is. In my experiment, I'm going to make one culture dish with A-type yeast. I'm going to do another culture dish with just alpha-type. Um, also note, I'm not writing all the way across the bottom, I'm writing near the edge, uh, because when I put the yeast on here, I'm eventually going to put it under a microscope, and I don't want the writing to get in the way of what I'm looking at. And then the last culture dish is going to be my mixed version. To test this, uh, or to transfer the culture tube uh, suspensions over to my dishes, I'm going to need new fresh pipettes. And I'm going to start with my A-type yeast, and I'm going to pull up some of the liquid, which has the yeast in it, cap the culture tube so it doesn't stay uh, mixed up, and I'm just going to take a drop of this liquid right into the center of my plate and leave it there. And then since I'm also going to be doing mixed, I'm also going to put a drop of mixed right in the center. And then for my next culture, I'm going to take the alpha tube, open it up, grab, suck up some of the water there, cap, and I'm going to put it on my alpha type, just put a couple drops. And then for my mixed, I'm going to put that same liquid in the same spot where I put the other liquid and cap it up. Now this liquid is done. It can be set aside. That uh, pipette is contaminated, and so I don't need to use it anymore, so I'm going to set it off to the side. Now I have my A-type culture, my alpha-type, and my mixed. Um, if I were to do something like measure distance, then I could put, where I put the drop of liquid with the pipette, I could put a drop of A here, alpha next to it, 
and measure the distance between the two to measure how far apart they are. I could even do multiple distances on the same plate. And when you put them on a plate, that liquid drop, which I don't know if you can see it right there, stays in one place. So that's the way I can measure distance without having things get all mixed up like they would in a culture tube. Once you get your plates set up, you can stack them. Make sure they are uh, labeled originally with your uh, initials or group name, and then you go place them in the incubator uh, to wait. Now, they have to be incubate for one to four hours. Most of you will not be able to actually get this done in one class period. You might have to come back during lunch or come back at the end of the day. Um, if you wait until tomorrow, the yeast will be overgrown and you won't be able to get any good data. So I'm gonna go put these in the uh, incubator for an hour and then I'm gonna come back to measure. Okay, and now we're back. Um, if you look at them, you will see nothing. These are microscopic organisms. They're still too small to be able to see with the naked eye. So in order to make our measurements, we're going to have to uh, put them underneath uh, a microscope over here. And we can't just put them directly on this microscope stand uh, because we don't want the agar and the yeast cultures to touch uh, the nose pieces of the microscope. So instead, we're going to use these little plastic cover slips. Um, now be very careful with this box because as soon as you open it, uh, the cover slips are very, very lightweight and they can spill and fall out. And as soon as they fall on the ground, they'll start picking up dust and uh, they'll completely mess up your, the rest of your experiment because you won't be able to see past the dust to count the yeast. So be very very careful with this box. You can open it up. And again, just like with everything else, you want to keep these as sterile as possible. So you only want to touch them around the edges. So I have this one here. I'm going to make sure I cap my box of cover slips to prevent them from going all over the place. Now I have this cover slip. There's a piece of paper, which I will carefully remove. And now I'm gonna take this very clean cover slip and I'm gonna place it onto the center of where I placed the yeast cultures before. So I'm gonna place it at an angle and then let it fall to the side. And that way it pushes out any of the air bubbles that are there. So now I have, I don't know if you can see that very well, I have a cover slip sitting in the middle on top of the agar plates. And now I'll be able to put them underneath the microscope, turn it on. Um, the only way you're going to be able to make counts is if you use the blue uh, nose piece, which is the most powerful. Um, and it's going to be very delicate when you actually make your measurements. Uh, the cover slip is gonna be pretty much right up against the lens of that blue IP, or uh, blue nose piece. Um, and in order to be more efficient with this, you just need to practice using microscope as much as possible. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I wanna show you one other way that you might um, make your culture dishes. So say instead of doing distance like we did here, say you were just trying to test, uh, like you were mixing different volumes of liquid and different A and alpha in one test tube, and you wanted to see if this liquid at different like temperatures or whatever it is that you were doing, uh, create a different number of schmooze. You need to have a way to put this liquid underneath this microscope. So in order to do that, we're going to use some microscope slides. So the same deal applies to these as the cover slips. You need to keep them very clean, keep them covered, uh, don't drop them, don't let them hit the floor, don't let dust get in, because that will completely uh, make them dirty and hard to see underneath uh, your microscope. So you can open it up, slide out one slide, 
holding it around the edges. Um, if you want, if your microscope stage is clean, you can set it there. Uh, setting it down on the table causes the bottom to get dirty and then there'll be scratches and it'll be a terrible mess. You can then take your culture tube, take another clean pipette, stick it in there, and now you just want to put a tiny little drop of liquid, not a lot at all. One little drop of liquid is all it takes. There will be um, thousands of yeast in that one drop. Go back to your cover slips, again, being very careful not to drop these. Take a single cover slip out, being careful not to uh, touch the sides, or to not touch the center. And again, you're gonna place this, just like we did with the other one, at an angle, and then just let it drop onto that drop of water. Go back, cover your cover slips back up, set them aside, keep it all organized. Now you're gonna place this underneath your microscope, and you're gonna start probably with the yellow, which is the medium magnification, and the big knob on the side, as opposed to the small knob down here, the big knob makes big adjustments in the height of the microscope. So you want to bring it up fairly close and then start looking through the eyepiece until you can make out some details. Once you can make out details, slide this uh, nose piece over to the blue one and now you're gonna wanna either just use the small fine adjustment or if you're gonna use the uh, big adjustment, you're gonna be making movements that are so small you wouldn't even be able to see them. Um, so mostly focus on the fine adjustment uh, piece and zoom in until you can see. One last trick is right along here is a wheel which uh, changes, it has different sized holes and it changes how much light can actually go through. The less light you have, the easier it can be to see. I know that seems a little backwards, but when there's too much light coming through that hole, uh, it completely washes out any details, so you wouldn't be able to see the tiny yeast. So if you go to one of these smaller uh, holes, only a little bit of light can get through, and you'll be able to see the details in the yeast, like their shape, whether it's a sphere or uh, more oblong, like a schmoo, uh, you'll be able to see that. So I think that's all. Um, you, of course, will have some big adjustments based on what you're experimenting with. Um, but that's the basic setup for how you're going to do this lab. I'm so hungry, man. I could eat the rich. Eat, eat, eat the rich. Eat, eat, eat the rich. Yeah, I'm so hungry, man. I could eat the rich. Eat, eat, eat the rich. Check me out. Uh, things are looking good, but I can't miss with your hair, though. Ergo, the ladder climb is an air show. But